Hello, everybody. Hello. My name is Gene Slowinski. Welcome to about a three minute presentation. I've never done that before. We'll see if I can do it now. Uh, if you're new to IRI, I want to encourage you to become active. Why? My PhD is in technology management, but shh, don't tell the dean I said this. Most of the practical information I know about technology management, I learned at IRI. I have been a guest of this organization for over 30 years. That's right. In fact, see this IRI shirt? Spring 1998. I was a, I had to be here 10 years before they gave me the shirt. Uh, by the way, Sotheby's has begged me to put this shirt up for auction, but no, 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 no. Let me talk about a little bit about the value of IRI. Uh, the thing that's excited me most over my time here is that we conduct research on how to do research better. And I've been involved in over 20 projects that look at a wide variety of really key uh, R&D projects. I'd like to share the learnings from one of our projects, Reinventing Supplier Innovation Relationships. It's no secret that supplier relationships can be suboptimal. The team that worked on this project asked the question, how can we move from the traditional approach of drop your price a penny a pound to an approach in which suppliers are excited to bring their innovations to an IRI company? To answer this question, we interviewed the R&D and the purchasing executives from IRI companies that look like customer firms, and the R&D and the sales executive from IRI companies that look more like supplier firms. What I'd like to do is I'd like to share the two learnings that we came away with. Next slide, please. First, the value of defining an innovation versus a commodity. And secondly, I'd like to talk about voice of the supply chain. Next slide, please. A Let's think about the value of defining an innovation versus a commodity. Does your company have a clear definition of really what is an innovation? What is a commodity? Is that definition agreed to internally by the R&D executive, the procurement executive, the supply chain executive? If not, when somebody comes to your organization with an innovation, they talk to the R&D person and the R&D person gets very excited. This is exactly what we're looking for. And they go talk to the procurement person. The procurement person says, drop your price a penny a pound. That is the exact same thing as saying to that company bringing the innovation to you, you might as well just say, here's the business card from my chief competitor. They know how to deal with innovation. Go talk to them. That's while that's true when you're talking to a traditional supplier, it's particularly true when you're talking to a small high technology firm that is coming to you with a proprietary patent protected innovation that will really do something valuable for your business. So let's talk about some of the implications of getting a clear definition internally. The first one, the most obvious one is a pricing model. Commodities should be priced at Drop your price a penny a pound. That's correct. Innovations, very different. They need to be priced at what value do they bring to the product? Let's talk about locus of control. When someone walks into your organization with an innovation, the most likely place for the decisions to be made and the locus of control is R&D. If somebody walks in with a commodity, the most likely place is either supply chain or procurement or both. Let's talk about the IP model, the intellectual property model. When somebody brings an innovation, we can really do wonderful things like allocating based on field of use allocations, time, geographies. And in fact, you will make real friends in this world, particularly with small companies, when you come in and say, I only want rights, probably exclusive, in my areas of business interest. In areas outside of my business interest, you go to whoever you want. 
But then we can use grant backs and grant forwards. I've been a licensing guy for 30 years. Don't get me started on licensing. Grant backs and grant forwards to make sure that I am always using the highest level of that technology, no matter where it was created, as long as it reads on the original patents. So finally, every innovation transitions into a commodity over time. What's the trigger? When does that happen? When does that happen? What does it mean for pricing and locus of control and IP rights? These are the kinds of things that we were really working, working at uh, or worrying about when we were doing this project. Next slide, please. What I want to talk about now is voice of the supply chain. But you know, I wonder how much Sotheby's would give me for this shirt. Well, I'll have to find that out. Let's talk about voice of the supply chain. Companies, particularly companies that are market facing, they, they sell something to people like me, have been doing voice of the customer forever. What hasn't the customer told us? We've been bugging them with design thinking, voice of the customer. We, we sit them in a chair, tie them down and put big lights in their face. Tell me what you want. We wanna know what you want. Next slide, please. What that does is it shares with us what, what, are, the, what are the near term attributes, the high value attributes of something that I can bring to the marketplace. But voice of the customer is like crossing the street and looking one way. Now I know what I, they want, but what I don't know is, can I deliver it? That is voice of the supply chain. Next slide, please. Think about voice of the supply chain. Can I go back into my supply chain under the appropriate agreements and understand very clearly what my suppliers are working on that integrate with the voice of the supply chain and I'm sorry, the voice of the customer information, and that those innovations from the suppliers will be available to me in a market relevant time. It is the combination of voice of the customer with voice of the supply chain. It's the overlap where the near term high value projects can be found. Ladies and gentlemen, Next slide, please. I really want to thank you for your time. I am looking forward to when IRI is back in person. I, I, I've always enjoyed these meetings and after 30 years, uh, you know, I need to talk to Ed about the, uh, the retirement package. What's the pension look like for IRI? Happy hunting. Thank you very much. Goodbye.